And next here on WBBC One, the Saburo European Championships 2020. and welcome to day four of the Saburo European Championships. With four teams beginning their campaigns today, we start with the blue and yellow of Sweden taking on the red fury of Spain. From the San Mames Stadium in Bilbao, we join Clive Webb and Martin Bannon. Well, good evening and welcome to the uh, San Mames Stadium here in Bilbao, where we're here for this Group E clash between Spain and Sweden. Uh, two interesting teams here, Spain with quite a few young players, uh, hoping to recreate some of the magic from their 2012 Euro victory, while Sweden are a little bit, uh, well, a bit of a mixed side here. Uh, Martin, who are you looking out for in these two teams? Well, I think the experience of Busquets in the middle should be able to pull this Spanish team together. Sweden, I'm looking around for talent, Clive, and I'm not finding it. Kay's on up front, could be good for a goal, but I'm not sure. Hmm, interesting stuff. Well, let's see how this one pans out. This is Fabian, I think, on the ball here for Spain. He's heading forward. Oh, wow, what a start for the Spanish team here. 30 minutes in, and what a screamer from Fabian. What do you make of that, Martin? Well, he's been compared to the incomparable Raul, and that's why laces straight through the ball. Beautiful finish. This is Quazon moving through the middle of the pitch here. He looks like he's teeing up for a shot, actually. Wow! What a finish there from the young Swede. Wow! Martin? Hurled himself into the crowd, and they're loving it. Absolute screamer. And this is uh, Steven Gerrard here for Spain. Wow! What a shot there from about 40 yards out. Incredible stuff, Martin. Get Hogwarts on the phone. That boy has got a wand of a right foot. Oh, majestic stuff. I'd just like to apologise for an earlier error where I incorrectly identified this young man as Steven Gerrard. There was a little bit of a mistake on my notes. And Martin accidentally put two R's instead of one. My sincere apologies for that, Clive. Spelling never my forte. Apology accepted. Oh, in the meantime, Spain has scored. What a beautiful little goal, that. Uh, I Actually, I correctly... Uh, ooh, blimey, who was that who scored, Martin? <laughs> Beats me, Clive. <laughs> <laughs> well, me. whoever it was, it was a beautiful goal. <laughs> well, after some careful analysis, we managed to discover that it was, in fact, the aforementioned Gerard who scored that third Spanish goal. And what a goal it was. Well, Spain have had a fantastic result here, beating Sweden by three goals to one. <laughs> A comfortable win for La Roja there. Michael Cohen, what did you make of their performance tonight? Yes, it, it was an exciting game of football. Spain scored three goals. They actually kicked the ball into the net on three separate occasions. Uh, they, they certainly did, Michael. Um, Gerard picked up two today. He's had a decent season in La Liga. Is he one to keep our eye on? I don't like to single out individual players, if I'm honest, Barry. The main thing is that everybody had an enjoyable game and all the players left the pitch safely. I see. Well, next up, a classic tournament mismatch as the might of Portugal faced newcomers to the European stage, North Macedonia. 22 men will line up but the eyes of the world will, of course, be fixed firmly on one man. 
We join the action in Budapest. Well, here we are in the Pushkash Arena in Budapest. And what a beautiful city it is. We are here for this Group F clash between North Macedonia and Portugal. Uh, predictions for this one, Martin? Well, I don't mean to demean the Macedonians, but I could see this being a cricket score tonight. Ronaldo, I'm looking for him to score seven, maybe eight goals. I beg your pardon. It's seven or eight goals for one single player. Is that what you're claiming here, Martin? Yes, that is correct. Wow. Well, I shall leave it up to our avid viewers to decide whether they agree with Martin or not. Let's see how the action unfolded. Second minute here. This is Ronaldo darting forward. He skips round one North Macedonian defender and another. Oh, oh what a finish, Martin. What do you make I of that? I told you, Clive. I told you. It's two minutes in, they're already 1-0 up. At this rate, they'll be 45 nil at the end. And this is Ronaldo again on the ball for Portugal, darting again. Ooh! Oh! Oh my word. Wow. Uh, well, Volovsky has just completely cleaned <gasps> out Ronaldo there. Uh, I must say, Martin looks a little white face next to me here because he can see. You can't see it yet off camera. Oh. Um, Ronaldo is down and on the ground. Oh, my word. I'm, I'm fighting viewers, back the tears, Clive. Viewers but... of a nervous disposition may wish to look away now. A uh, little bit of argy-bargy here between the Portuguese and North Macedonian players. As you might expect, the referee comes in to break things up a little bit. Uh, Volovsky has been shown a red card in the meantime. Uh, rightly so, the Portuguese players incensed. Uh, the groundsman's come across here to see if a repair can be made on pitch uh, and to see if his legs can be reattached to his base. Unfortunately, uh, we're hearing on the team radio here that he is going to have to be stretched off and glued externally. Well, we wish him all the best. Thoughts and prayers with him, Clive. Thoughts and prayers. Oh, this is Bernardo Silva moving forward for Portugal. He looks like he's... Oh! Gearing up for a beautiful shot there. He did a fantastic job. Very nice technique, that Martin, wasn't it? I cannot tell a lie. My heart is broken. Well, Martin, rightly, still recovering from the drama of earlier. Um, a good result here for Portugal. They've beaten North Macedonia by two goals to nil, but the game overshadowed by that horrific challenge on... Ronaldo, and rightly so, Portuguese fans will be concerned as to whether he's going to make a recovery uh, and make an appearance later in the tournament. Such an important player for the Portuguese side. Will they survive without him? We shall see. Well, an absolute horror show of a challenge there, Michael. And Portugal's talisman out of the tournament for the foreseeable future. Some are already talking of criminal charges being brought against the North Macedonian defender. What did you make of the challenge? Well, Barry, I find human, human suffering to be distressing in all of its many forms. Yes. Uh, it, it can sometimes be a different sort of challenge for a team of world-class players to be facing off against a side of what is, to be honest, a much different level. Do you think that might have played a factor in what was a slightly underwhelming 2-0 win for the Portuguese? I do, Barry. In fact, it reminded me of another game of football I once watched. Unfortunately, I cannot remember which game that was. Incisive words, Michael. Three more games to go this evening. And we begin at Hampden Park as Scotland face the Czech Republic. Scotland found themselves in dreamland after just 12 minutes against the Czech Republic when they were awarded a penalty for Andrei Salutska's poorly timed challenge on Callum McGregor. James Forrest showed why he's been one of the stars for Celtic this season as he stepped up to slot home coolly from the spot, giving Scotland an early lead, much to the delight of the packed Hampden Park crowd. Well, after half-time, the Czech Republic came back out, all guns blazing, and Patrick Schick brought the Czech Republic level after 68, sorry, 62 minutes, bundling home a close-range effort past floundering Scottish goalkeeper David Marshall, a moment to forget for him. In the 80th minute, McGregor thought he'd pinched it for Scotland, but was denied by the woodwork. Instead, it was James Forrest who was ultimately the hero of the hour with a stunning strike in the 85th minute to clinch the three points for the Scots, much to the anguish of the Czech fans. For the Scottish fans, though, this was a moment to savour, 
their first victory in a major tournament for 24 years. Ireland were hoping to follow Scotland's example in their opening game against Poland. However, after 31 minutes, they found themselves a goal down courtesy of Camille Grishiki, who danced through a lacklustre Irish defence and slotted home coolly from the edge of the box. Ireland did little to test the Polish defence, and instead it was their own defence left in tatters once again, as Sebastian Szymanski made it 2-0 with a well-worked move in the opposition box. Poland linking together play very nicely and showing what a strong team they are. So a disappointing night in Dublin for the Irish fans, but a strong start from Poland, who will be looking to challenge Spain for the top spot in Group E. Incredible start for the Scots there, but the boys in green struggle to really get into gear. How do you see their chances going forward? My Auntie Carol actually lives in Fife, which I believe is in Scotland. And as for Ireland, I've never been fortunate enough to visit, but I am told they are a kind people. Well, thanks for that, Michael. As a global megastar's career hangs in the balance and the Tartan army dances the night away, we have to ask the question, is there anything this tournament won't throw at us? Good night. Well, he's been compared to the incomparable Raoul, and that's why. Get Hogwarts on the phone. That boy has got a wonderful right foot. I cannot tell a lie. My heart is broken. I could see this being a cricket score tonight.